Hi, everybody. I am Matthew Miller, and this is a Fedora Council video meeting. We do these about once a month. Um, the Fedora Council tries to conduct our business kind of in asynchronous online ways of you know, chat and mailing lists. Um, we're moving actually now to the discourse forum, which is actually a thing I want to ask the magazine people here about in a little bit. Um, but we discovered that having regular meetings is important for having a cadence of getting things done. And having these video meetings lets us do some kind of high bandwidth things, kind of keeps people tied together. And we dedicate them once a month to some part of the project where something interesting is going on that we would like to know more about or that we would like to highlight. Uh, and so this month we are looking at Fedora Magazine. Fedora Magazine is uh, not actually a magazine, it is a blog, um, but it is uh, kind of meant to have kind of high quality user focused content about the uh, about what's going on in the Fedora community. And so we have uh, Gregory, Gregory Bartholomew and Stephen Snow here. Uh, Gregory is standing outside in the university campus and Stephen I think doesn't have any video, but uh, both here to talk about this. So uh, welcome, tell about, us about yourselves and about the Fedora Magazine. Hi. Uh... I'm here at uh, Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. I'm borrowing their Wi-Fi because, uh, well, I wasn't real confident in my home Wi-Fi, especially uploading video. I'm new to this video in a uh, conference thing, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, it yeah, seems I joined, to be going well. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, hopefully there's not too much wind or uh, other noises or the signal's decent. Um, You're doing fine. So, all right, I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Uh, the uh, I probably joined the magazine a couple of years ago. I just saw a uh, an ad on the sidebar said, um, you know, we're looking for contributors, writers, and I've been working here at this university for over 20 years uh, for the computer science department. I figured I have a little experience. I ought to be able to write a little uh, little how-to on an odd subject or two from time to time. And uh, so I joined in, yeah. Um, I, any other questions? I don't know. Uh, well, uh, uh, let's hear from Stephen. You have an introduction? Well, uh, I'm Stephen Snow. I, I've uh, <clears throat> been a Fedora user for quite a number of years. And I started writing, actually, for the magazine as a challenge by C. Verna, one of the editors of the magazine. He had written an article about something that was sort of Microsoft oriented, and I said, well, why don't you do that in a Fedora land thing? And uh, so that's how I started writing for the magazine. Uh, nice. I became an editor. I guess, well, didn't seem to be a lot of people volunteering for that, and I felt like I needed to contribute. Yeah, uh, that, that's, that's a good way. When you see a need, step up. Thank you for doing that. Um, See, the Fedora Magazine, when I started as project leader, was uh, not going very well. There was barely any content at all, and I started doing a, a weekly thing called Five Things in Fedora this week, which wasn't great, but it was some content every week. And then just having that content every week uh, started other people paying attention to it a little bit more, and it kind of got built and built from there. And for a while, um, a couple of Red Hatters were putting a lot of their actual work time into doing it when um, they weren't actually supposed to be paid for that. Um, and then um, started putting in their out of work time as well. Uh, but in order for it to be sustainable, we really needed to build up something that was community led rather than uh, you know Red Hat led because this is not something that Red Hat's going to pay for. They like to pay for engineering things. So um, it's awesome that uh, you are here helping with this. We really appreciate that. Um, do you have? Can you tell us some about like the current state of the magazine? Does it feel? Does it feel like it's self-sustaining at this point? Does it need help? Does it? There is. Uh, uh, go ahead. I was going to say uh, a lot of times we we hit dark spells of dry. Not enough content. There's a lot of good ideas. Spec article, uh, article column and Kanban is quite full of good ideas. We just don't have a lot of people putting the effort into pushing out those ideas for articles. 
So, uh, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. You said there's a Kanban. Um, maybe not everybody knows what a Kanban is, but basically that's a, a, a online board of like post-it notes of ideas that can be moved from column to like starting on the left column of this is a crazy idea to the right column of this is a finished article across a process. Um, and so there is a Kanban board on teams.fedoraproject.org. Is that correct? There you go. Um, and we'll, yes. we'll put a link in, on YouTube about this um, where uh, story ideas can be, how, how, do, how do story ideas get put on that board? Like what's, what's the process? There's the source uh, right now mostly is from discourse. Okay, and that's discussion.fedoraproject.org on the magazine category. Right? Correct. Uh -huh. And uh, we also look at what's up and coming in the test cycles. So um, who puts the ideas, if you have an idea like that's discussed in the in the forum, um, who puts that onto the Taiga board or the, the Kanban board? Usually the second editor who gives a, the idea plus one. Okay, so that's and basically two editors look at it? We, we like to achieve two plus ones uh, just of content, I would guess, not just okay. every article coming in. Yeah, that, that's good. A, a commitment to some quality is appreciated always in Fedora. Um, and then, so then um, once they're there on that ideas board, um, can anybody pick up an idea? Like if somebody's listening to this right now and has, you know, clicks clicks on the link that we'll provide and wants to, wants to go see what's going on and they see everybody, something they're interested in. Everybody is welcome to contribute to any of the spec articles. Pick a spec article and, and contribute to it. You're you're more than welcome to do so. Okay. And then what's the process for that? Uh, sign up to uh, the magazine uh, WordPress instance using your FAS account or account sign on. Uh, <clears throat> Also sign on to the Tega, uh, Fedora's Tega instance for the magazine project. So let's you go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, um, I it, let's say I haven't used WordPress or done blogging before. Um, you know, I've written some stuff, but I haven't haven't done that. How hard is this? Like, can can the average person do this, or do you need to have some technical skills um, beyond the writing? It's, it's almost. Well, I mean, once once you have your FAS account and you sign up, it's pretty easy to fall into doing any of these things. You can write about, use a text editor. Basically, you should be able to contribute an article if you have an idea that you want. Okay. Cool. Um, you were saying something else. You want to go on with what I interrupted you about? Uh, I guess I was basically going through the process of trying to get your article started, but. Yeah, go ahead. So once once you've signed up there, you get invited by one of the editors, and uh, then you can begin the process of working on your article. And uh, if you've taken it from a spec and you are actually have some content sitting at WordPress now, you want to move it into the in-progress column, you do so at, uh, when you're ready to do so. And, when you feel the article is complete enough, you move it into the review column, the the take a card that starts in the spec column. Okay, so you basically just move it from one step to the next, and then somebody the editor picks it up for review and publishing. Yeah, on Wednesdays we have a meeting at uh, 0800 UTC to talk about the up and coming article potentials that are there and uh, what state they're at and whether they go to editing or whether they need to go back to in progress and get in touch with the authors and clarify the situation for them so they know what's happening. Cool. How many people participate in that meeting regularly? Uh, usually we have a minimum of about three people and sometimes we have upwards of eight or nine, which is nice. Okay. Yeah, that sounds pretty healthy. Yeah. Cool. We have um, occasionally had just one. That's, that's less one. good. I was <laughs> one. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, from what I've seen, it tends to tends to veer towards the lower end of that spectrum. Um, I kind of come and go myself, uh, and that's something if you do want to contribute, 
Um, I would say, you know, even if you just want to do an, an article once in a great while, uh, anything's welcome. And um, I didn't actually intend to become an editor either, by the way. Uh, I started out as a writer. I was just going to write a few articles and see how it went. And I jumped in on the IRC. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't clear that it was just for editors. I really just wanted to chat a little bit about my article and make sure everything was clear, you know, there weren't any problems. And uh, I kind of got volunteered up into doing some editorial work. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of the way it goes. Once you get started, uh, you'll, get, you'll get some nudges, you know, if, if they like your writing style, I guess. Uh, it may depend on, you know, some of your skills a little bit. But, but uh, yeah, you can easily get uh, drafted into more and more things. It might be a good place to get started if you, if you want to just contribute, if you have the time, if you have a little know-how. Uh, it doesn't take much. Anything you can contribute is great. We're, we're looking cool. for writers. We're looking for editors. Yeah, that's one um, great thing about Fedora is if you keep showing up, people will find work for you to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Any, anybody with any computer skills, there's, there's just you, you can find work very easy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's harder to find free time for most of us, I think. True. Um, what I, I noticed that every magazine article has a nice graphic that goes with it. Where do those come from? Um, those, uh, uh, there, a lot of them are just uh, photos. I'm not. I'm still learning some of the rules. Like I said, I kind of come and go, and I, I miss things sometimes. And and they've been changing a lot of things uh, recently. That that Kaiga or Kanban thing. That's all new. Of course, discourse or uh, was it called discussion. Fedora. That's all new. So. A whole lot of things are in flux. I guess that's the norm for Fedora, <laughs> from what I can tell. Uh, but uh, the system seems to be improving all the time. And as for the photos, um, they uh, there's some online sites where you can get um, CC, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Creative, Creative Commons, Commons licensed yeah. photos. Yeah, Creative Commons licensed photos, which is what is what they prefer. Uh, and usually they require attribution. I think CC0 didn't require attribution, but some of the newer licenses do, so we have to be a little careful with that. Uh, that's something we're trying to do uh, a little better. I think some of our photos in the past didn't have, well, they may have been CC0. I, I'm not sure that there were any issues, but but yeah. um, but we're trying to attribute everything we can, and, if, uh, and sometimes we just make them up. Uh, a lot of times we'll use some Fedora background off of uh, a Fedora, you know, it might be an, even an old edition of Fedora. I've grabbed some of those backgrounds. Some of them are still, you know, they look as good as they did the day they were published. Right. So, uh, well, we like to use the Fedora backgrounds because the licenses are good on those. And um, and sometimes they're just uh, a plain background. Well, if you have a, some art skills, uh, we could probably use some artists. Like I'm, I am not an artist. <laughs> I got into the computer business uh, uh, because that was more my skill set. But um, but if you can uh, fiddle a little with uh, Inkscape, Inkscape, create some layers. You know, just I, I don't think uh, I don't think the art. Uh, you say you were impressed by it, but uh, <laughs> uh, thank I think you, I guess. I thought every, it was kind of, you know. Every, every article has an image that goes with it. It makes it kind of visually appealing. It's not just a, you know, text blog. I think that's nice. Is there a connection with the Fedora design team, or is it done mostly independently? Uh, it's What I've done is totally independent. Uh, I think in t the idea was that there was supposed to be somebody with that skill set that would do the images, but I don't think we really have a good uh, artist in our team, okay. uh, at least not not currently that I'm aware of, and we've we've been just the editors have been getting have been doing some of the images as well, uh, just doing the best we can. I think um, Paul Fields or Fields, however you say his name, Real. is uh, yeah. yeah yeah he's he's tried to put together some sort of video just recently to, that's supposed to teach us how to do some basic like shadows or something, as I understand oh. it, but. Uh, <laughs> Nice. Uh, I, I think it's still in, in the works, uh, and okay. I haven't, uh, haven't seen it yet, but, um, but yeah, they're, they're, we're, trying to, we're trying to do better with the, uh, the graphics, um, and uh, have a little fun with it. Um, you know, you can be a little creative. Uh, I did one here just recently, uh, 
uh, for the encryption article, it was uh, getting started with Stratus, and I was kind of happy. I thought that was kind of creative. A lot of people may not know what that was that was on the photo there, but it's actually an ancient encryption tool. It was a, I can't remember the name of it. You'd have to look it up on Wikipedia or something, but but it's like an old tool Romans used to use to encrypt messages. They'd take a ribbon nice. and they'd wrap, they'd wrap it around a Oh, a, yeah, right, device. for doing a Caesar cipher. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Cipher, right, yeah. So yeah, yeah, you know, what, whatever you can think of, whatever comes to mind, and uh, yeah, if you can uh, fiddle with it a little bit. And, and, and I'm uh, going to look this up real quick. Standards, there are no standards that I'm aware of for, you know, how good the image is. Uh, like I said, uh, I've been making yeah. it up as I go. A Skytali, I guess? Yeah. Anyways, uh, sorry, that was very distracting for me. Um, let me let me get back to focus. Um, one of the things I think we might be able to do um, in having you here uh, is connect you more closely with the Fedora design team. Unfortunately, Marie can't be here today, but she's um, our Fedora community outreach and impact coordinator, and she's you know works on the Mindshare team and with the Fedora design team as well. And maybe we can make more of a like a, a workflow connection so that. Um, people on the design team can look at the articles in progress and make sure that there's like that's it that's an easy task for new people to the design team as well that could kind of help that connection go that would be awesome sounds yeah. great I, I think historically a lot of the reason we haven't done that is just because the t lead time is pretty short between time when the article comes in is sort of ready yeah. and then it gets published um, it's like uh, Ryan Lurch is an editor technically still um, but so he was doing a lot of the image work early on because he's also a member yeah. of the design. Yeah. But um, yes, lately it's, it's, we don't have a long publish window generally. And so, you know, having the editors or the authors do their own image tends to allow us to publish, you know, on time. I, um, so another question I had was about statistics. Do you know, do you have offhand ideas of how well the, site does and what kind of numbers we see. I have that open right now, Matthew. Do you, Ben? I anticipated your question. So we average um, roughly 280 to 300,000 page views a month uh, over the last year plus. Um, we have a lot of articles where individual articles get, um, you know, up to, up to a th a 5,000 views is pretty common. Um, 10 for some of the the bigger ones, obviously, like the release announcements get a ton of views. Um, and then articles about um, sometimes more controversial or very topical content. Um, it's like the we had a System D, Resolve D article uh, fairly recently, and that's one of the big Fedora 33 features that um, you know, System brings D is some... still getting the clicks, is what you're saying? Yeah. Amazing. Um, but you know, I, I would say most articles these days get at least a thousand views, just because um, you know this is sort of the place that people go for uh, Fedora content. You know, it's on the the start.fedoraproject.org page, um, and a lot of I think a lot of people who cover the Linux space pay close attention to what goes on in the magazine because that's how they find out what they need to be covering uh, from a Fedora standpoint. Cool. Yeah, that that's quite a lot. So this is also a way for you as a writer to get your writing out to a wider audience, if that's something you're interested in. Well, um, so are there things um, that are not going so well in the magazine that that council could help with? I mean, I'll, I'll let Stephen and Gregory uh, disagree with me, but I think. For the most part, we're uh, a finely tuned machine right now. Um, you know, uh, like we were saying earlier, there, we sometimes get lull, a lull in content, um, which usually then is averaged out by a whole bunch of content coming in all at once. Uh, so, you know, on average, it works out. But just, um, you know, we we could always stand to have more more writers and more editors join in. But I I wouldn't say there's any area where we're particularly flailing at the moment. Okay. Um, I guess that brings me to the side question, which is, uh, 
when you have that glut of content or some, do you schedule those to go out over a period of weeks or do you tend to run it as it, as it's ready? Is, is there an editorial calendar? It really depends on the level of content of the, each of the articles. Right? So if their quality is there, we'd like to publish three articles a week. If we, we can plan okay. out a couple of weeks, have six articles content available. That makes sense. Yeah, so. But if so we only have one article, then. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's hard, hard to stretch one article over for several weeks. Um, a, a few months ago, we we kind of came to the conclusion that if we don't have three articles for a week, we should just take a deep breath and that's okay. Um, so we've had some weeks where we've only published two or one. I don't think we've had any. We didn't any weeks where we didn't have anything to publish. Um, but you know, it doesn't really seem like it really hurts our overall engagement if we have a slow week here and there because. You know, at some point we'll have plenty of content and then we'll have, you know, two or three weeks basically scheduled out, ready to go. Yeah, I feel like as long as. Go ahead. I, I was just saying, I think our audience really likes quality, too. Yeah, rather than just putting filler in there for the sake of filler. There, there's some level where you've got to make sure there's content, you know, at least once a week to make sure people know that it's not dead. But. Hopefully, it doesn't. That isn't an issue very much, and it sounds like it isn't. Um, one of the other questions, things I wanted to say is, Fedora does have some budget for things, and this year actually, um, not that we're I have money to throw away, but because there's less travel than usual, we do actually have some money to spend for the rest of the year. Are there things in the magazine that money could help with? The answer can be no, but. Um, I don't know if there's anything from the WordPress side that we could pay for to have a little editing capabilities or writing capabilities on the site. There are some issues with the interpretation of Markdown, it seems, but I know that could just be who <clears throat> the author's choice of editor at. Yeah. Honestly, I can't think of anything that wouldn't be an ongoing cost. Like, you know, it would be great to. Yeah. You know, pay pay the pay writers, for example, that would be awesome. Um, but that becomes very unsustainable very quickly. Yeah, so, I, know, I do believe writers deserve to be paid. Uh, this, this is this is a, a labor of love kind of kind of situation, which I really appreciate, especially for the good writers who's you know, writing does deserve it, it is worth something. Uh, and I think one of the things about that is uh, everything in the magazine is Creative Commons license. So by contributing to the magazine, you're not just contributing to Fedora, but you are contributing to the greater good of open source public documentation. And you know, people can take what's written and adapt it for a different Linux distribution or a different use case, or it can be put into um, into you know, the the docs site. Um, Arch Linux Wiki, well, welcome, welcome to take our documentation and add it, add it to their beautiful site as well. It's all part of the big uh, movement of sharing, which is awesome. Um, Neil, you had a question in the chat a long time ago. Do you want to say it in real life? Sure. Um, so we've been talking about this as a Fedora magazine that's not very magazine-ish. Uh, what what would it uh what's stopping us from producing like an actual digital formatted magazine formatted style thing with the content you know maybe not necessarily regularly but like as some kind of fun um celebratory or one off whatever kind of thing to kind of show you know the best of the magazine or something like that in 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 an actual magazine form to just you know as a bit of eye candy for for people who frequent uh, the Fedora magazine. I mean, nothing's stopping us. There's just nobody <laughs> stepping up to do it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can. I, would... I can take a little bit on that. Uh, to to do a 
printable format uh, requires uh, several stuff, not only the articles. Uh, you need to do the, you need to do the what is called uh, 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 schematic schematic of how the digital format is going to be. Also, you need to agree it in a format. I think uh, a beautiful format could be PDF, but maybe ebook or or something. And there is also if you are going to do, for example, like a special edition with what you think is the best, you need to select the articles. That that could be the the most easy part because uh, you can just take the statistics to what's mo the most uh, viewed article and and pick from there. But uh, also I think uh, it requires some uh, commitment and time and work to do that is not easy to do and it's I think it's a work that is beyond the writers you know because it's more dedicated to the format not only to the article because uh, writers. Uh, uh, thankfully, we have a lot of great people reading articles in the magazine. Maybe that's something that would be uh, something we could uh, ask the design team to look at if they would be interested in, not necessarily as a you have to do this, but here's an idea, uh, put that together. Yeah, and I think it'd be kind of nice if we could, you know, get a, a limited edition print run made and, you know, send that as like a, a thank you gift to the people who, you know, contributed articles to that or, you know, something like that. Cause it, it's kind of fun. Um, you know, I, I've written for opensource.com for many years and they do a, a yearbook every year where they take, um, you know, some content is directly for it and some's just reprinted from the site. Uh, they have it available for sale, but all, everyone who contributed to that yearbook gets a free, Print copy, and it's just kind of cool to have, and like you know, something have tan something tangible to hold in your hands, and you know, it's kind, kind of a nice. Of, thank you. An annual thing, kind of like it's like the year in review kind of thing. Um, and depending on how expensive that is to make, that might be something that um, would be fun to give out at conferences, or even you know, to sell for five dollars at Fosdem or whatever. Uh, and you could throw it up on the Red Hat Cool Stuff store randomly. We could. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't know if um, we can put bespoke merchandise on the Cool Stuff Store. Right, the Cool Stuff Store is really just a you know, it's secretly like Zazzle or something in the back end, right? It's not. It, anyways, um, that that's Red Hat's uh, online swag store. If anybody's paying attention, um, okay. Uh, well, then the door needs on one. <laughs> Yeah, we actually had some stuff there for a while, but the logistics of it are kind of annoying. So um, we'll, we'll work on that again sometime. Um, any other questions for the magazine folks? Okay, well, thank you very much for being here, answering questions, um, being subjected to interrogation. Uh, thank you, Ben, for helping out with the stats. Um, and with that, I will conclude. Bye, everybody. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye.